You're listening to Win the Day with James Whitaker. What we do in life echoes in eternity. Broadcasting from Los Angeles, California. Here's your host, James Whitaker. Let's go. Welcome back to Win the Day. We're getting close to the end of the year. Can you feel it? I definitely can. But the good news is you've still got a couple of weeks to take some big action to crush the goals that have been evading you so you can really have something to celebrate when we hit 2023. We've got an awesome episode for you today. I'm going to share the most impactful moments from the Win the Day podcast in 2022. These are the things that have resonated the most for me and I think you'll really enjoy. It's actually going to be a two-part episode because there's so much great stuff stuff in here. Before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to Adam in Caboolture, Australia for his review of the Win the Day podcast. Adam said, this is the podcast you have been looking for. If you want a podcast that helps you be a better you, cut straight through to all the stuff you want to hear and leaves all the fanfare at the door, this is it. James has a voice that resonates with you and content that resonates with your subconscious. So have a listen today. Adam, thank you for that amazing review today. I am grateful for you, my friend. And if you're a fan of the podcast and you'd like to help more people discover the show so they can win the day too, here are the three best ways to do that. First, you can share your favorite episode with a friend. Second, you could subscribe on YouTube. And third, you could give the podcast a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, just like Adam did. I'll also give you a shout out on the podcast so you know how much your support means to me. As I said, it's been a huge year, and I want to give you a bit of an inside look at what's been happening. 2022 was the year when I thought, you know what, it's time to really step up our game, even though I was super proud of what we had done previously. So what did we do? Well, we upgraded the guests more than ever, as you've seen. We also started doing interviews exclusively in a professional recording studio here in LA, and we began pushing the content out on all the socials at a much greater frequency, which I'm sure you've seen if you're following me on TikTok and Instagram. Instagram. The result is that the Win the Day podcast now has more than 10 million views, more than 10 million views. So thank you for your support. It means the world. And let me tell you, we're not just warming up, we're stepping up. In 2023, I want to reach 100 million people so they can adopt the Win the Day mentality and start making big things happen in their own lives, just like you and I are doing. So whether it's been a fun year or a tough year for you, remember that the best way to enter the new year is with an idea of what you want to achieve and a bulletproof plan to make it happen. That's what I try and do for you with this show. And that's what we're going to give you in this episode. 10 things to think about so you can win the day every day. And next week, I'm even going to give you 13 more. So as we go through these lessons, I want you to think about what you're going to do to put them into action, because that's the most important thing. As Napoleon Hill said, action is the real measure of intelligence. As always, before we begin, the right bit of inspiration can completely change the trajectory of someone's life. So if there's a friend or loved one who needs to hear this episode or could use some help to win the day, share it with them right now. All right, let's go through the best moments of the year and give you the first 10 steps to win the day every day based on the best lessons from the podcast in 2022. Number one, accept what's happening in your life. You can't move forward in a sustainable way without accepting where you're at. And often that can be an extremely daunting thing to confront. In episode 89, resilience expert and five-time best-selling author Janine Shepard came on the show and said, Acceptance is actually the first step in my 12 steps to resilience. And acceptance is so important because... I call it the doorway. You've got to get to the doorway. You've got to accept whatever is happening in life. And for me, it, it wasn't to, you know, the point where I got to it when I got home from hospital in a wheelchair and plaster body cast as a paraplegic, having to accept that all of the goals I had in life, going to the Olympics and all the other dreams and goals I had were gone. I really had to accept that before I could move on. It was almost like life was saying, you know, let go of those things and then I'm going to show you something better. Um, I always say that life is a series of loosening our grip on how we think life is supposed to look. And it's a challenge because we live in a world with, with social media. We see everyone else's life. Oh, they're all doing so well. And it's just, it's smoke and mirrors. They're not. Everyone is struggling with something. And so I really, I mean, I urge people too to sort of limit their time on social media and really spend time in their own, um, circle of influence, what they can control. 
That's your opportunity to accept where you're at and what trajectory you're on so you can start to focus on the steps that will get you in the right direction to give you some momentum and start brightening your life a little more with each day. So that's number one, accept what's happening in your life. Number two, reconnect with your purpose each day. A lot of people in the win the day community talk about how to win the day, you need to win the morning. And I love that. One of the most important components of your morning routine, especially if you're super busy or finding it hard to get balance, should be to reconnect with your purpose every day to remind you of what it's all for. In episode 71, Prana Gupta, who has people like Ashton Kutcher, Jamie Foxx, and LeBron James investing in her company, shared this. I mean, you are out there on your own. Everyone is writing you off. And back then, especially, being a founder was not cool. I mean, when I quit my job, you know, I remember I, I majored in economics at Stanford, like all of my friends were in consulting and, and finance and, you know, four years into my failed startup, they were on, off to business school at Stanford and Harvard. And, and here I was just with nothing to show for, for my decisions. And they thought I was crazy, but, you know, so everyone was writing me off, but it was really just, you know, there, there were those days where I woke up just asking myself, like, what am I doing and why am I doing this? And do I still believe? in myself and, and, and in my dreams. And every time I asked that and really dug deep, the question was, I'm doing this because it's the only thing I can see myself doing. It, you know, there wasn't really a question. I'm not gonna go back to that stable career path because it just doesn't inspire me. And what inspires me is creating these products that have the potential to, to bring joy into people's lives. And that was really always my mission um, with the startups that I did. And, I just felt like, I honestly just kind of almost felt like there wasn't a choice, <laughs> you know? This is what I was meant to do and the only thing that would fulfill me and that's what kept me going. So tomorrow when you wake up and you take a moment to yourself, check in on whether you still believe in yourself and your dreams. When you can do that from a clear headspace, you'll find that intuition guides you to the right decisions automatically and you'll find a lot more meaning in every action you take throughout your day. So that's number two, reconnect with your purpose each day. Number three, start selfish and then share your expertise. I don't want you to misinterpret this one. The idea is that you should focus on developing some type of specialized knowledge, some type of skill first, and then try and share those gifts with the world, not the other way around. This comes from Kenny Aronoff, who's one of the most accomplished musicians of all time. But he only got to that point by spending thousands of hours, probably tens of thousands of hours behind closed doors where no one could see him mastering his craft. That selfish and that relentless focus gave him a skill, an ability to play the drums better than almost anyone else in history and led to him selling more than 300 million records and playing with some of the most iconic musicians on the planet. In episode 91, Kenny revealed a bit about that mindset. In order for me to be the drummer I became, or I'm still trying to be, oh my God, it was all about me. Practicing eight hours a day. Day I graduated high school. Practice, practice, practice. Me, me, me. How do I sound? How do I look? What do you think, teach? What do you think? This? What do you think? That's fine, but in order to be really successful and stay successful, you pivot from not, it's not about me. How do I serve the artist? that I'm working with, the band. How do I become the greatest drummer I can possibly be for that guy's music, that band? How do I serve the musicians, the producer, the engineer, the record label? Serve you, serve me, serve everybody. What can I do? And the North Star is this, to get the song on the radio to be a number one hit single. It's not about me. Get the song on the radio to be number one. That might mean don't play at all. So don't get frustrated that people aren't buying into your hype just yet. It might simply mean you need to spend a little more time honing your craft behind closed doors and then the world will be ready to receive you for the amazing individual you are. So that's number three, start selfish and then share your expertise. Number four, rise above your environment. A lot of you listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube grew up in really difficult circumstances. A lot of you might even be in one of those environments right now. 
but you should never let that environment dictate your destiny. After all, you are so much stronger than you ever know, and the most important opinion is how you feel about yourself, as you hear me say on this show all the time. In episode 73, property expert and Wall Street Journal bestselling author Ralph D. Bagnara came on the show and shared a little bit about how he thought bigger than his circumstances to get to where he is today. I think that your surroundings sometimes put limitations on you, you know, whether it's family members or your neighborhood or, you know, maybe even where you work, but you put these limitations on you. And I think that if you accept those limitations, then you just continue to stay where you are always, right? Like you continue to get pulled back in and it's, it, you know, it's like that crab in the barrel, you know, syndrome, right? Like it's just, you, you keep getting pulled back. And I feel it sometimes, like people talk about imposter syndrome and stuff like that, but I feel like that sometimes you feel guilt for leaving that stuff behind. I want to better myself and I think other people should want to also. So as, as long as you're not putting the limitations on ourselves, because I think besides that, there are no limitations. What people think of us isn't necessarily who we are. And as long as we realize that, then there is no limitation. You know, you can really do as much as you can. But I think that's how we break the cycle of generational poverty, right? We just show people that there is more than people are telling them there is, than their surrounding is they're telling them are. And I'm gonna show you what that is. So remember, the most important thing is to take the necessary actions that enable you to become the best you can be, even if you need to leave some toxic people and some toxic situations behind. That's number four, rise above your environment environment. Number five, focus on progress over perfection. This came from Kurt Seidensticker, who's the founder of billion dollar health brand Vital Proteins and a former rocket scientist. When you're focused on perfection and that perfectionist mentality, you get stuck. What you really need is action to create momentum so you know then what needs fixing and then you can make those adjustments as everything gets better and better and better around you. Here's what Kurt had to say and how that mindset helped him build a billion dollar company. Some of them are like progress over perfection. I mentioned when I worked for NASA, it's all about perfectionism, right? But you don't make any progress. That was my challenge at NASA. I wanted to do more things. I always teach the company, move very quickly. Mm progress over perfection and, I, and a lot of people they, people want to do so well with their work and they want to be really good but you miss the market opportunity uh, the other one is part of that progress over perfection is fail early fail often meaning failure is probably the biggest element of success and if you're afraid of failure you're afraid of success right because you're not out there actually learning from your mistakes you're not out actually out there improving what you're building and so the idea is don't be afraid of so if you're serious about success, abandon that perfection mentality once and for all and start focusing on progress. That's number five. Number six, demonstrate your commitment and go the extra mile. A lot of people talk about what they're going to do, but at the end of the day, it's deeds, not words, that determine your character and ultimately your reputation. In episode 95, Wes Denning came on the show to talk about how he went from being a wannabe TV host in Brisbane, Australia, without any experience in the industry whatsoever, to one of the most successful TV producers in the world. It all started through a simple commitment to go the extra mile and show the powers that be how badly he wanted it. Here's how Wes described that critical early chapter in his life. There was a show on Australian TV called Totally Wild, and it had been on forever as a legacy program and it was on 48 weeks of the year, four afternoons a week. And they actually produced it out of Brisbane, which is where my hometown is. I was fortunate enough to meet the executive producer of the show, it was a guy called Jeff Cooper. And I met him at an event or a function. And he probably shouldn't have done it, but he gave me his number or his card, (laughs) one of the two. And I just started calling him up and I was like, Jeff, I wanna work on Totally Wild. You know, would you consider having me on to do a couple of episodes? and he was very polite and then I kept calling him and I kept calling him and he stopped taking my calls and as soon his assistant would take the calls. Hey Wes, nice to hear from you. And I probably called three or four times and then eventually the call came back and they said, hey, we're willing to have you come in for two months. It's gonna be unpaid and we'll have you on two days a week. I said, done, I'm in, like no problem at all. And I actually started coming in five days a week. I just came into the office every day and if I wasn't working on a story, I'd write scripts, I'd pitch my boss, I'd, I'd, I'd try and help out. I just wanted to be part of the environment and to learn. And, uh, and after six months, oh sorry, after two months, I was offered a six month talent contract on camera. And then after that six months, it became like a producing contract. And so when I was at Network 10 in Australia, as a 21 year old, I was there for five years. I was very, very fortunate because it's where I learned how to make TV. So we, you know, every day I'd be making stories for Totally Wild. 
writing scripts, going in the field and shooting them with one camera, coming back to an offline machine where I'd do a paper edit, going in with the editor to make a three or four minute segment that would go into the show every night or every afternoon. And in that time, I got to do, you know, Totally Wild, which was a travel adventure show. I got to do live news. I got to do New Year's Eve live telecasts. I got to do sports programming at 10. I got to do three different documentaries at 10. Um, and then I got to, I developed and produced a series on life in Antarctica and spent six weeks living in Antarctica. And that series did extremely well. I'm so grateful that, you know, I didn't make a lot of money in that time, but that's where I learned how to make TV. So it was those early years of just grit and persistence and belief. Now, Wes, he's a humble guy. I know him really well. So he's actually underselling just how committed he was. If you're serious about a career and want to get the ultimate foot in the door, demonstrate your commitment. And that only comes through your actions and proving how badly you want it. That's number six. Number seven, hone your uniqueness into greatness. There's a lot of hype around greatness, but for a lot of people, it's too much of a leap to go from where they are now to being the great person that some people tell us we're capable of, whether that's a well-intentioned friend or an optimistic parent. But there's a pathway to greatness and it all comes through highlighting what's unique about you and celebrating that uniqueness instead. In episode 111, former pro baseball player Josh Kalinowski shared a little bit more about that philosophy. But I think, unfortunately, the word greatness paralyzes men way too much, paralyzes women's way too much as well, too. Um, you know, if you talk to your kids, you're like, dude, you got greatness in you. And they're like, man, I, I, dad, I struggle to brush my teeth, right? <laughs> you know, like they don't, they can't relate to that. Mm. But when we can say, hey, listen, you've got a uniqueness about you that you can hone, that you can practice, that you can work on, and you can turn it into your greatness. Well, now we have a chance. Now we can have some direction. Now we can say, okay, I get it. You're right, dad, I am unique. Or Mm. yeah, you're right, I am unique. There's something unique about me that's just a little bit different than everybody else, right? I am uniquely and wonderfully made. And I can turn that into greatness. And baseball was that for me. I had this uniqueness about me. I was, once again, a big fish in a very small pond. Well, that was a blessing. Because if I would have been in California, Texas, Colorado, it wouldn't have been nearly as, I wouldn't have been nearly as big and the pond would have been a lot bigger. So I was able to stand out. I was tall, I was lanky, I was left-handed, I could throw hard, I could hit a baseball. It just, it all made sense to me. But what I did with relentless pursuit was I perfected that. I turned that into my greatness. And because of that, I got to chase my dream for so much longer than anybody else. I got to chase that dream for um, not as long as I wanted to or I had envisioned, but it was still an amazing ride now that I look back on it. And I'm so grateful for that opportunity because those lessons I learned have helped me and pushed me so that I never gave up on myself. Even though there were times or moments that I most certainly did, I never truly gave up on myself completely. I always had just this little shimmer of hope that there was something more. So next time you feel the need to call someone great or you're doubting your own abilities, lean into uniqueness instead to provide the confidence to get to that greatness. That's number seven, hone your uniqueness into greatness. Number eight, view failure as a gift. I mean, you know this one already and I get it. It can be easy to say and much harder to do in practice, but it's one of the most important pieces to adopt if you're serious about a growth mindset. In episode 85, three-time Olympic gold medalist Leah Amico came on the show and she said this. I think the hardest thing was you're playing with superstars. And so, you know, throughout the season, you have ups and downs. You have good days and bad days. You have, you know, a weekend that's a little slump and then you got to come back from it. You know, normally you're going through that in college, but now you're on the Olympic team and now everybody else being so great, <laughs> it kind of exposes and makes you feel that much worse when you go through <laughs> that that little rough slump. So I think that was the biggest thing for me is that got magnetized. And I'll never forget calling my college coach, just talking to him about a rough day that I was having. And he said, you know, Leah, your ability to excel at this elite level, he said, is going to be your ability to deal with your failures in a positive way. He said, how you deal with it is going to dictate everything. And isn't that true in life and everything we go through? It's how do I process it? How do I um, maybe use it and and put it in perspective, which sometimes we got to step back for a second. And then what can I take from it, learn from it and then move forward. So it was really just allowing those voices to remind me 
And then that's right, stay mentally strong, you can overcome this. So if you're truly serious about the results you want, make sure you've mastered the ability to deal with failures in a positive way. Your life will change as a result. That's number eight. Number nine, focus on process, not motivation. Motivation is massively overhyped and it's not quite as sustainable as people believe. But you know what is sustainable? Process. In episode 105, my good mate Ollie Ollerton, who's a former British Special Forces operator and one of the few people to pass both SAS and SBS selection, shared this. Your brain is wired to take that creative procrastination. It will try, you know, your, your brain says, go check your phone, check your email. It's looking to try and steer you in a path that's going to avoid the unknown stress that's about to happen. You know, and that for me is is the point I'm getting to is process is what gets me through that. Process, I, I've got to switch off the emotional messages going on in here and just follow process. I know at that point I wake up, I don't need an alarm, alarm clock anymore, you know, because I'm so used to getting up at that time. So I wake up, I know straight away I've got to get out of bed, you know, and that's a process, get out of bed, get up, go downstairs, do this one, da, 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 this, that and the other. You follow the process, put your trainers on, get the dog, take a step outside. As soon as you close that door, everything changes. You know, so really for me, it's about process. Process is so powerful. Don't expect to be motivated. It comes and goes. I don't care if you're an astronaut, special forces soldier, gold medalist. Motivation comes and goes. It's not there all the time. Um, and that's where process really is important. From A to B to C to D. Follow that process and you'll get there. So stop waiting to be motivated because that moment might never come. Instead, build your process and stick to it. Come rain, hail or shine. Your discipline will reward you massively over the long term. So that's number nine. Focus on process, not motivation. Our final insight, number 10, use your relationship to become happier. You've heard me on the show talk a bunch about how great Dr. John Gray is. And just go and look at the comments on the YouTube episode we did together. The man has a way of thinking and communicating that very few of us do. And it's so practical. One of the best insights he shared was the distinction between using a relationship to become happy versus using it to become happier. In episode 101, here's how he framed it. Part of a marriage is we are dependent on our partners uh, for many things, but a healthy relationship, you're not dependent on your partner to be happy. You use your relationship to become happier. That's a healthy place. If you really take, it's called you know, getting a life, thinking of men, women as dessert. You know, this is this is like the I do all this stuff in my life and I'm happy and fulfilled. I, I you know, I might have children, I have pets, I have my relationship to the earth, I have my work, I have my friends, I have my spirituality, I have my health, I have my education. These are all needs that we have as human beings. But when we get in a, we, as soon as we touch into sex, it's like the brain goes, this is it, you know, <laughs> and, and, and we get addicted to that. And anytime you, you're, you're unhappy, in my perspective, is when you're unhappy in a relationship, you're prioritizing your partner more than yourself and your life. Think of him not as the main meal or think of her not as the main meal. Honestly, I could have included the entire episode here. There's that much gold in it. So go and check out episode 101 with Dr. John Gray. I'll include a link to it in the show notes. And remember to use your relationship to become happier. Here's a quick recap. Number one, accept what's happening in your life. Number two, reconnect with your purpose each day. Number three, start selfish. Number four, rise above your environment. Number five, focus on progress, not perfection. Number six, demonstrate your commitment. Number seven, hone your uniqueness into greatness. Number eight, view failure as a gift. Number nine, focus on process, not motivation. And number 10, use your relationship to become happier. Remember, you'll find a link to the full episodes where all of those come from in the show notes. Tune in next week where I'm going to share 13 more lessons just like this one to help you win the day. And that will also be our last episode for the year. That's all from me. Remember to get out there and win the day. Until next time, Onwards and upwards, always. Thanks for joining me on another episode of the Win The Day podcast. We want to hear your thoughts on what we covered today. So drop a comment on the YouTube version of this episode with your favorite takeaway, any questions you have, or what actions you'll be taking as a result of what was shared in this episode. And if you found value in the Win The Day podcast, leave a five-star rating on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You'll find a link to both of those in the show notes. It'll only take you a few seconds and more ratings really helps other people discover the show so they can get the mindset upgrade they need and we can bring more winners into the Win The Day movement. 
That's all for this episode. Get out there and win the day. Until next time, onwards and upwards, always.